Hi, this is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. If you end up liking this video and found it helpful, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In this video, we're going to talk about the different volley techniques. Most people feel that there's only one volley technique or that there is a perfect technique for the volley. I'm going to show you how there's several variations of the volley technique and how you need to master each one when to use each volley technique and how to use it. So we're going to talk about the upper body, mainly the racket work, as well as the lower body, what we should do with our footwork. Because most of you struggle with certain volleys. For example, if you receive a fast ball or if you receive a low ball or if you receive a high ball, a put away volley in which you're close to the net. So I don't want you to struggle with that particular volley just because you have just one volley type because you are really limiting yourself at the net if you only have one type of volley you can only do well in that specific volley situation so whether you're receiving a fast ball a high ball or a low ball i'm going to show you when to use each volley technique and i define each volley technique or the volley types as the block volley finishing volley and the catch and carry volley I'll show you when to use each volley technique as well as how to do it. And again, we'll we're going to talk upper body technique with the racket as well as what you should do with your footwork. This first volley type we're going to go over is the block volley. This volley is used when you receive a very fast ball. Typically, you're close to the net and the ball may be coming right at your body. Two common problems I see when people receive the fast ball is they use too much racket, okay? There's a lot of energy on the ball because the ball's coming fast, so you don't want a lot of energy on your body. So you want to keep it very simple. You're only going to be moving that racket a few inches. Also, people often will force a step or use too much footwork when the ball comes fast. You do not have time to have footwork. Most of the time, you're going to have very little footwork to no footwork. So I'm going to demonstrate. I want you to notice how I do very little with my feet and very little with my racket. The ball is coming very fast. I have to just simply redirect the power I receive by sticking the racket out. Reminds me a lot of just catching the ball. So take a look at how I use very little racket and my feet do not move a whole lot because I don't have the time to do that. See that? Now my contact on the volley, this particular volley, is closest to the body because I'm absorbing speed of the incoming ball. So notice again, I'm not doing a lot of footwork. I'll show you one more pouring volley. I simply stick the racket out. And again, as I said, this is important. Many volleys are hit in front of the body. When you receive a fast ball, you want to absorb the pace. Contact should be closest to your body, approximately in line with your front shoulder. So simplify the lower body with the footwork and simplify the upper body with not moving the racket a lot and that fast ball that you're receiving will not seem so fast. After I explain each volley, you'll see a couple slow motion clips of me demonstrating the volley I have just described. So here is of course the block volley. Notice my footwork, I take a step to the side with my left foot because I'm creating space. I'm not stepping in, I'm not moving to the ball because you simply cannot, you don't have the time. So a lot of people are told to step in they're not told when not to step in. This is a time where you cannot step in because you don't have time to, and stepping in would just uh, make it more difficult to control the ball as you are receiving a fast ball. So you want to keep the body quiet, keep the racket work simple, don't do much with the footwork, less is more. This volley type is called the finishing volley. This volley is used when you receive a high slow ball in which you're close to the net when you make contact. There are two very common flaws I see when players receive this ball. One is in the lower body and one is in the upper body. First one we'll talk about is the lower body. When you're at the baseline hitting ground strokes, you're going to wait for the ball. That is not the case at the net, especially for this volley type. We don't want to have ground stroke footwork at the net. At the baseline, you wait for the ball. At the net, we got to have volley footwork. We do not wait for the ball. 
Now notice how I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it, and then I'm going to show you the right way. Take a look at just my legs and how I wait for the ball. I don't move to it. All I have is one step. I'm not pushing off the ground. Now I'm going to push off the ground. I'm going to use my legs, use my athleticism. I'm going to meet the ball at the net as opposed to standing and waiting for the ball. Again, we don't want ground stroke footwork. This is now the correct way. This is the right way to move to the ball with a volley footwork. So I'm going to push off the ground and finish. One more time, and then I'll demonstrate the back and volley just after this one. So I push off the ground and I move to the ball. Very different look than the first volley I did there in which I was waiting for the ball. Same thing in the back and volley. I move to the ball. Okay? I don't wait for it. Move to the ball as opposed to waiting for it. So it's really balling with your athleticism as opposed to having that ground stroke footwork where you just set your feet and you let that ball come to you. Now, the second thing, many of you are doing too much swing on this volley. Now, I know you've probably heard don't swing on your volley, but why is that important? You don't want to swing on your volley because the longer the length of your swing is, the harder it is to control the ball. Now, we are going to lengthen the path of the racket on this volley type much more so than the block volley that I showed you earlier simply because you're now receiving a slow, easy ball. So now you can afford to push off the ground and use energy and use your legs because there's not much energy on the ball. So here is a visual to ensure you don't swing too much on this volley type. At the end of the volley, you'll see that the tip of my racket points to the target. Once I go further than that, you see the tip's pointing that way now, now that's too much swing. So take a look, I'm gonna do one forward volley and one backhand volley. Notice how the tip of the racket points forward. Same thing in the backhand volley. Notice how I don't break the plane there, meaning the tip of the racket points forward. Let's watch this one now. Move to the ball, tip of the racket points forward. Another side note is when you hit this volley type, the contact should be farthest in front. We talked about the block volley, the contact is least in front or closest to your body. So contact is well in front on this volley type. Use your legs, do not wait for the ball. You don't want ground stroke footwork. Use your athleticism and remember the tip of finishing with the tip of the racket to the target. It's a great visual to ensure that you don't swing too much. You can even hold that finish to see if you've got the right length of swing. So here's the finishing volley type. Look at my racket and where I finish right there pointing my racket to the target. That's a good cue to ensure that I didn't have too much swing in the volley. Now look at my lower body. Look where I start. Now I'm moving forward, moving forward, push off the ground, and end up very close to the net. Same idea on the backhand volley. Look at where my racket finishes. I'm pointing to the target at the end. I'm not going farther than that with my swing. And look where I start on the court. I'm about one step inside the service line right now. So I'm moving to the ball, I'm not waiting for it, I'm using my athleticism to create the power. This last volley type is called the catch and carry volley. This is my favorite volley because I feel that it is the most feel good shot of all three volleys that I've mentioned in this video. It also, I think, looks the coolest. Now, the time that you're going to use the catch and carry is when you receive a low ball. So anytime that contact is below your waist, you're going to use the catch and carry volley technique. Now I call it the catch and carry because if you were to catch a tennis ball in your hand, you would not take a backswing, right? We would keep the hand in front when we catch a ball. So the same is true when we do the catch and carry. There should be very little to no backswing, just like catching the ball. And then after contact, you're gonna carry your hand and rack it towards the target and finish with a high hand. So I'm going to demonstrate for forehand and backhand volley. I want you to just notice how I have no backswing, and then after contact, I do a little follow through. So not a ground stroke follow through, but a volley follow through. So two words that come to mind is I got gui guiding, and it, and it looks smooth, guiding and smooth. I'm going to hold the finish so that you can see exactly how you should finish, and I recommend you hold the finish as well. So notice how. See that there? 
One more time. Catch and carry, right? I'm going to demonstrate for the back end volley a couple, and then I'm going to talk about the footwork for this particular volley type. So I catch and carry. I catch and carry. Holding that finish, I finish with a high hand. The low contact volley, so I need to guide the racket to the target. It's not an accelerated guide. It's a, it's a smooth, slow guide with the hand towards the target. So let's talk about the footwork. The footwork for this volley type is you're going to jog while you hit. Of course, you want to remain low with the upright upper body posture. So take a look at my feet here now, in addition to my catch and carry. So notice how I don't stop when I hit. I run through the hit. I'm not sprinting through the hit. I'm certainly not stopping at contact. I'm just doing a bit of a jog. So watch this. So I'm moving through the contact. Same for the back and volley. Moving through the contact. And I'm just jogging through the hit. One more. Jogging through the hit. Okay? So remember, no backswing, but you need a little follow through, a controlled follow through. And you're going to jog through the hit. So that's the footwork. And then that's the upper body work for the catch and carry volley. Watch my right foot here, how after contact I land this extra step. I call this the follow through step. This step allows me to move through contact. This way you're able to maintain upper body posture, help you control the racket, and it helps you to move through contact and maintain balance. So watch this last volley here. Notice how I set the racket in the preparation right here as I'm like I'm going to catch the ball and then after contact I follow through for control. So now you have access to the three main volley techniques or volley types. You know when to use each volley and you know how to execute the technique of each volley whether it's the footwork or the racket work. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe, share with your friends, and give me a like, comment, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. I come out with a new video every Sunday, so please hit that notifications bell so that you are updated on future videos.